Let me introduce to you Chima Anwuka from Memphis and Elon, or sorry, Walden University and Grind City Kicks. Oh, good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank GSCA for having me. And I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my business and to also tell you a little bit about myself. So Grind City Kicks, also known as GCK, also known as the People's Brand. Now, I guarantee you by the end of this presentation, you will know why Grind City Kicks is called the People's Brand. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, GCK was started with a combination of the passion for shoes and also the purpose of helping others. So it started with me, Wala, the entrepreneur, Chima Anuka. So my passion or my purpose was into helping others. How did that form? It was started by me dealing with life challenges, me dealing with personal situations, different, different things that I went through and my personal experiences from a kid to a teen and to a young adult. I realized I went through certain things through me learning about psychology. But also I realized how to overcome these challenges by having this positive and healthy mindset. And I felt like as a person for me, as the average Joe, that I wasn't the smartest person in the room and I wasn't the, hot, the most talented and most skillful person. So I figured that if I can have this mindset, I can do this for, I can teach everyone else to have the same mindset. So the closest thing I could think of in a professional setting was counseling. So I pursued a master's and, count, and mental health counseling. And then next, I wanna have aspirations to have a PhD in psychology to know the human mind and the human behavior on a deeper level. But that wasn't enough for me. I knew if me as an average Joe that, you know, didn't, wasn't someone that knew too much about therapy, didn't know about counseling, somebody's not gonna be in your couch, someone that's not going to um, be in your counseling sessions, how can you grasp the attention of them? How can you inspire them that mental health is important, but also having a positive, healthy mindset can ultimately change your mood, your behavior, and ultimately your lifestyle. So I started Inspirational Speaking. I really wish I could talk more about Inspirational Speaking, but I can't. So please refer to the handout that I provided you. Okay, so the mission. Yes, I was working crazy hours, 80 hours a week, 16 hours a day, five days a week. Thought that that was the formula to be successful realize that it doesn't matter how much I work, somebody's only gonna pay you what they think you're worth and what they, what they think you are valued at. So this is where my entrepreneur mindset started to erupt. So I wanted to, you know, have a different stream income. I wanted to something to do that matched my personality, but I didn't know what to do. So my ex, my business partner at the time presented an idea that, okay, let's just sell sneakers. I see that you're interested in sneakers. I see that you're interested in shoes. You have a lot of shoes, you know about shoes. Let's sell sneakers. Mm, I was hesitant at first. In my community, especially, you have the middle school child, the college student, and the 45-year-old adult selling sneakers. And it's easy, and there's a lot of competition for it. And I didn't, I didn't feel like it was a market for me. But one of my aha moments was I went to this event, and this keynote speaker spoke about, if you're going to do something, do something that aligns with your purpose. And that word stuck with me, my purpose. I said, OK came back to my business partner at the time. I said, well, if we're gonna do this, we have to do something where it's different. We have to make sure it aligns with my purpose into giving back and to helping everybody else, providing smiles and impact into individuals and families in the community. So that's how we got our mission statement with Grind City Kids. Okay, so we were selling sneakers, sales was good, impacting the community, started getting local exposure. But at the same time, we, I still felt like we we're a mom and pop store. We're still selling shirts at the car, the trunk of our cars and stuff like that. So then I said, okay, how are we gonna move more into a, a business side of things? But we had these supporters, we had these consumers that supported us, that wanted to buy from us, but could not afford these high-end sneakers. So we had sneakers that were sold from $300 to almost $2,000. So I, I said to myself, I said, okay, what can I do to provide them you know, to provide more sales for them, to provide more support for us. I thought about one day, I said, okay, this concept, everybody has at least own a t-shirt and has at least have a t-shirt in their home or the household. I said, okay, t-shirt, cheap, easy way to support. And of course it provides brand exposure. From then on out, we started selling t-shirts, jackets, hoodies, joggers, shorts, jerseys, and everything else that you can think of in terms of apparel. 
then we started creating, we started getting our business license, getting our certificates to start moving more like a business and less like a mom and pop. So of course me, always thinking progressive, I said, okay, one of the things that I do is I study CEOs, I study founders, I study other businesses. And of course, I especially keep up with the businesses that's in my lane. And one of the things that they do is sports. Sports not only increase our sales and not only increase our brand exposure, but it also allowed us to tie back into our, our mission, which is also helping the community. So a lot of sports organizations and sports clubs that we partner with wanted to give back to the community, wanted to show impact, wanted to volunteer, but didn't know how to. So we provide that lane for them and we give them events, we give them philanthropic ideas, we give them that partnership that they couldn't get anywhere else or they couldn't get on their on their own. So one of the things that they, they love with partnering about us is not only they get this amazing customization um, apparel, but they also get that community side of it. So sales brought that. But at the same time, business was good, sales was growing, everything was going right, but we didn't want to lose the reason why Grind City Kicks made Grind City Kicks, which is our purpose, which is giving back to the community. So we use that same concept into partner partnerships with sports organizations into the community aspect. So I said, okay, how can we provide the most, most impact in our community with not just doing it alone? So what we did was we created partnerships and collaborations with other organizations and other businesses in the community to provide an impact. As you can see here on the right of the screen, we partnered with, or we collaborated with American Cancer Society to fight against breast cancer. I wish I could tell you more about that, but due to the time constraint, I can't. So please refer back to your handouts. Thank you so much. Okay, some of the things that we've done in the community, as you can see listed here, and one of the things that I'm really proud of that GCK has partnered and worked with over 20 companies and organizations already. Take us some time to look at it. All right. But here's the thing. Again, progressive mindset. Still getting pushed back from organizations and businesses to help us impact the community. Wasn't, get, wasn't getting donations, wasn't getting funding. Didn't get those grants that everybody else got. I says, okay, what are we missing? What is gonna help us bridge that gap and to helping to get in the aspect of helping the community. So I said, okay, let's start a nonprofit. That allowed Grind City Kicks to focus more on the sales and more on the business side of things, while the nonprofit still took care of the philanthropic side of things. One of the biggest things that we've done to date, our first project was, was during the pandemic, is we still went back to that same concept, t-shirts. Everybody has owned or has a pair of t-shirts in their home. So we said, okay, it's the cheapest way, it's the best way to support created a t-shirt, called it the COVID-19 awareness t-shirt, had sales, 50% of those proceeds went to victims that were dealing with the COVID-19. So as you can see here, we did a presentation check for one of our local nonprofit com uh, community organizations, and we gave them a check for all the proceeds that we got to help them continue doing the work in the community and providing more resources for those that need it. So what makes us different? Of course, 100% e-commerce, zero brick and mortar. Um, one of the advantages of that is that we save costs on employees and rent. But also another advantage of that is that we don't have overhead costs in inventory. This was especially important last year during 2020 of the pandemic. A lot of retail sales dropped drastically, but e-commerce rose. People were losing their jobs, people were staying at home, but they're still buying shirts, they're still buying sneakers. So we had one of our biggest years last year. Also, what we do is we have third party manufacturing and wholesalers locally, nationally and globally. So we meet the needs of every client, and every consumer, whether you want your packages within two to three days or whether you want customization work. So that allows us to if we wanted to have a GSEA jersey and customize and have GSEA with different colors and different organizations on it, we could. So one of the things that I wanted to, to establish with our brand and our business that we didn't want to three minutes. We didn't want to cater to a specific customer or consumer that we wanted to branch out and make sure that anybody was able to, to support, anybody was able to wear a t-shirt, anybody was able to get our apparel. And then our philanthropic side, that we didn't have a specific niche. If we wanted to give back to one community that has a specific need, we can do the same thing for another community. But most importantly, what, I, what we wanted to, to still grasp, but we wanted to make us real different is our standing uh, customer engagement. With being 100% e-commerce, consumers feel like they don't know who they're buying from or they don't know who they're talking to. 
So one of the things that helped us is our, our purpose, going back to that same purpose, our community engagement, our community involvement, that giving back, that volunteerism and all that stuff. That when you see a grind city case on your chest in the streets and in the community, you say, oh, that's the business that I'm buying from. That is the business that I support. So this is some of the things that we've been on, magazines, radio, articles, local news and radio stations. So what's next for Grind City Cakes? Well, we are a B2C um, business model, but we want to branch into the avenue of B2B, selling to other businesses, especially the startups and the new companies and the new businesses, because at one point we were just like them. So we feel like we had the opportunity to sell to them at a lower cost than other wholesalers in the, and wholesalers in the market. We believe that this avenue and sports can reach a global level from the time into sports that sports is played all over and all over the world. And then of course, people wearing apparel in different parts of the, of the world as well. Also, we wanna create an app. So make it more accessible to our consumers because what drives the market now is that middle school kid and that college student and either them buying it and purchasing on the app or them influencing their parents to purchase an apparel or a sneaker on the app. So we wanna make it an app that is accessible to everybody's smartphone. And then, a little, and then a little hint, GCK has their first manufactured shoe that is coming out this month. But I won't tell you too much about that on record. Please follow all the social media pages and stay tuned with the Grind City Cakes website. So I want to thank GCA for having me. I want you to see all the social media that we're a part of. We're being 100% e-commerce. We have to stay engaged. And then a quiz for the judges. Do you know why Grind City Cakes is called the People's Brand? You don't have to tell me the answer. You can just write it down in your paper. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chima. Great job. No problem. All Thank right, you. judges, we will open it up to you for questions. I want me to take my slides off, I think. Feel my free question. if you want to. You'll see the judges a little better. You can just stop sharing screen. I mean, can you talk a little bit about the product, the experience kind of sourcing and then manufacturing the first shoe product and what that's been like? I knew you were going to ask me that. That's a great question. <laughs> so what we did was we still related back to that purpose, that purpose of still tying it back to the community and impacting individuals and families. So we partnered up with a nonprofit organization that actually manufactures shoes. And what they do is 50% or 20%, whatever the number that they agree on, goes back into the community for a cause. So this nonprofit organization has done stuff with leukemia, has done something with breast cancer, um, different things like that. So we were like, this is perfect. It, another uh, community organization from the same city of Memphis, Tennessee, partnered with them. I said, okay, that aligns exactly with our mission. So then on out, we're going to have our first manufacturer shoot. Again, please stay tuned, follow our social media page, and go to the contact page. Thank you so much. Dan? Ema, yes, you sir. are a high energy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's fun to hear you talk about your business, but it, it struck me that you're running a business. You are running a nonprofit. You're expanding into different products. Um, how, how have you maintained focus on the business of the business, the development of the business, the profitability of the business? So that's a great question. So how I maintain focus of the, of the business, I've always, I'm a person that's progressive. I'm always doing research. I'm always staying tuned. I'm always, um, I guess per se, quote unquote, my ears to the streets. So whatever else, what other people, organizations or businesses that's doing in my lane that they're not doing correctly or they're missing out is what I am focusing more on. Of course, there's other businesses selling shoes. Of course, there's other businesses having apparel. Of course, they're branching out globally, nationally and locally. But what, what makes them different? So that's why we stayed with e-commerce. That's how we were 100% e-commerce. As you can see, Amazon has, created their first brick and mortar store. I don't know if anybody's aware of that, but for me it's okay, there's no advantage of that. Amazon is doing it, I'm not gonna speak on the record, but Amazon's doing it for other reasons. It has nothing really to do with their sales. So that's what I do. I stay on my research, I stay in my lane and I always look at other businesses and what they're doing wrong and the cons and pros of that business. All right, any other questions? Ash, oh, Ashlyn, you're on mute. Ashlyn, you're on mute. Sorry. 
great about that. So do you see your business evolving more as a product or as a brand? I see my, that's a great question as well. I see my business as doing both. Okay. I don't think, I don't think um, it's a con or a disadvantage to having me. One of the things that I realize is with the, with the brand, it can per se, just quote unquote for me, it can never go away. That GCK, that right. GCK will never go away regardless of if I have inventory or if I'm producing sales. That GCK, those three letters will always remain there. So with that being said, the brand is still there and then the business aspect grows because not only we're selling shoes and apparel, we're still in the community. And of course, everybody wants to give back. Of course, other businesses give back for other reasons that I'm not gonna disclose. So with that being tied in, we're always going to, I feel like we're always going to sustain and grow progressively. Thank you. I'm That's on your good. website now. <laughs> I'm in the shopping section. <laughs> So Chima, all, you, you and can, all of your shoes are out of stock. They are. They're selling. So one of the things that we did was instead of continue to uh, produce more shoes of those re high resale value, we wanted to make sure that, okay, have the anticipation that this first manufactured shoe is going to come out. Let consumers say, okay, when is it the first shoe coming out? When is the first shoe coming out? So we, hold, we held off on um, some of the shoes and we wanted people to wait on that first manufactured shoe. But if they contacted us, that's what I do through my social media page. If they contacted us, whatever shoe they wanted, they can get if they ordered it. So, yes. What kind of revenue have you had so far? Kind of, so, I, so in terms of specific numbers? Or ballpark. <laughs> so last year was our highest year in 2020. So we had over, um, I'm going to just say over $100,000 in revenue. And that was all product sales? It's all product sales, yes, sir. Kachima, you have your, uh, your, you may have many talents, so it sounds like you're, you're on the inspirational speaking circuit. You have Grind City Kicks. You're going to go get uh, a PhD. Are there other entrepreneurial ventures that you're looking to jump into? And this is just kind of the one for right now you're talking to us about? What's kind that of is, that is a cooking? great question. I think about that question, I think, every day. Um, for me, um, in terms of, you know, building up a brand or a business, maybe not, but I can never say never. I've, all the things that you see here, I would have never guessed in five, five years ago. If you had asked me, you know, you will start up a brand, you will start up a business, you will do a nonprofit, you'll do inspirational speaking. Inspirational speaking for me was scary. <laughs> when I tell you, had panic attacks, chest pains, hands start getting sweaty, headaches. That wasn't something that I ever saw myself doing. So with that being said, I want to be an investor, though, from the business side of things. I feel like I can help other businesses grow, help them progress. And I feel like as someone that is business minded, like, I feel like I can be an investor and put my money into what they're doing and grow, especially from now startups. I'm not sure yet. Are you doing the designs of the shoes and things? I am part of the team of doing this. I'm not the, the head creator of this design, but everything has to go through me before it's approved, so. You will love the shoe, trust me. <laughs> When's it gonna come out? It's supposed to come out this month. And um, particularly the significance of this month is why the shoe's coming out this month. So that's a little hint for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, any other questions, judges? There's a lot of cliffhangers in this presentation. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Can I ask a question? Do I have a judge ask a question? Okay, any, any other judges want to know, uh, answer the question, the quiz question? Do you know why Grind City Kicks is called the People's Run? Just take a, take a lucky guess. I had no idea. <laughs> No one. I mean, it's it's named after Memphis and shoes, so it's just the people of Memphis. It's kind of the namesake. Just well, more of we're giving back to the community, so we're impacting the community, we're impacting families. So it's the people's brand. So we're for the people. We all started from being for the people. We never really started from just selling shoes or selling apparel. 
or even into the sports. We're always about the people. So whatever the people wants is what we give them. That's why it's called the people's game. I like it. All right. Well, Chima, thank you very much. No problem. And we will see you again at 4.15. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thanks, judges, sir. for having me.